Okay. Can you hear me well? Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let me share my screen a bit. So, yeah, today we're going to, uh, oops, we're going to cook what we call Indonesian chicken mushroom noodles. <laughs> um, yeah, first of all, uh, I know you already know my name, that my name is Elise, and yeah, I, I've been uh i've moved to bristol like 2018 and and ever since i i went to trinity church and until now yeah so this is holly holly my my baby and harwin's my husband and i work and it cook pet uh cook pet is a, app, a cooking app that help people to search and save their own recipes so this is Actually, where I'm starting to cook is when I start working at Cookpad. And yeah, like I shared today, I will share how to make chicken mushroom noodle. So actually, there are many, many, many types of flavor, topping, taste uh, for noodles in Indonesia because we are a noodle lovers. Like, yeah, Indonesians are really, really love noodles. And I share chicken mushroom noodles because um, it's one of my comfort food when I miss Indonesia. Uh, mm -hmm. I usually cook it uh, like in the morning because that's what me and my family usually eat. My mother used to make it and yeah. So yeah, I, I, I cook this uh, a lot in, in UK. The ingredients are so easy to find and Especially uh, and also, it, it's very easy to make as well. Um, yeah, so this is actually inspired be one of from my mom and one of from a re local restaurant in our uh, in our country. So this is a very famous local restaurant that they serve this kind this type of noodles. So you can <laughs> see. Okay, so. This is the takeaway version of the Indonesian mushroom, chicken mushroom noodles, but we, we are not going to make the, the meatballs and the, dump, the fried dumplings. We are just only make the noodles and, and the topping. So this is the takeaway version and this is our version. Yeah, this is, yeah, we are gonna make this version ourselves. So let's get going. So I, there are, I, I want to explain a bit before we deep dive into the, the cooking process. So there are five steps to create this chicken uh, mushroom noodles. The first one, we're gonna cut and marinate the chicken. And then the, ra the second one, we're gonna cut the rest of ingredients. This, uh, the third one is we're gonna stir fry the chicken and the mushroom and after that, we're gonna boil the vegetable and the noodles. And the last one is the seasoning. So it's very easy, uh, but it do take several steps before we can, we can cook it. Um, so, okay, before we go start, if you've got any questions or anything, just shout out or type in the chat or yeah. And if you do not eat chicken, example uh, you can change it with a lot of mushrooms like you can actually use a lot of different mushroom it will be very tasty because mushroom has a lot of umami taste and also you can replace it with tofu but i think the tofu you should choose is the firm one yeah the the firm one so it will not uh broken easily and if you haven't cut your chicken is yeah you I usually sharpen my knife like around 30 seconds that it will help me to cut the chicken easier. So is there any questions? No? Okay. Oops. So, uh, so the first step 
we're gonna cut and marinate the chicken. So we need to prepare 500 grams around approximately 500 grams chicken thigh. You can with uh, you can use with or without skins. Uh, I especially like to use with skin because I'm we're gonna use the skins and uh, the oil that comes out from the skins later on to seasoning our noodles. But actually, if the chicken thigh has is oil enough, so you can use it without cut uh, without skin. So we're gonna cut cut it approximately two times two, and we're gonna marinate with uh, one teaspoon of oyster sauce, one teaspoon of Shaoxing wine. Uh, this is a Chinese wine. If you do not have it, you can replace it with sake or uh, red sherry, or uh, you can uh, dismiss it. It's, it's totally optional. And marinate with another one teaspoon of soy sauce and a pinch of white pepper. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna slice the chicken. <laughs> Yeah, I usually cut the chicken uh, not too small because it will shrink when you stir fry it later on. But it's actually, uh, it's your own preference of taste. If you would like, if you like to eat bigger chunk of chicken, that's, that's all right. Or if you want to eat smaller chunk of chicken, that's, that's fine too. So yeah, this is the part where, yeah, we are still cutting the chicken. So I usually, I take out the chicken out of the fridge and then I cut it. And while I cut it, I will marinate it and set, set it aside for 30, 30 minutes. So by the time the chicken, so by the time I finish prepare things, the chicken is already reached the room temperature and it's, it's, uh, it's going to be helpful for, for us later on when we stir fry uh, the, the chicken that had already reached room temperature. So that's what I learned. So never, do not cook, do not cook chicken or meat or beef that you take it out directly from the fridge and then you put it on the pan. It will make, uh, it, it will make you hard uh, to cook it properly because it's cold. So you need to season the chicken with, uh, you need to season the chicken with one teaspoon of oyster sauce, one teaspoon of Shaoxing wine, or if you do not have it, just keep it. One teaspoon of soy sauce and a, a pinch of white pepper. So this is the Shaoxing wine I use for seasoning. And this is one teaspoon of oyster sauce. And one teaspoon of soy sauce.
So the the shaoxing wine or or the sake will be used to reduce the the smell of the chicken. So yeah, if you actually do if you do not have it or you do not use it, actually it's fine. So we set it aside for 30 minutes. Uh, the oyster sauce, uh, if you're not eating meat, you can change it with mushroom sauce. So actually there are two types of oyster sauce in Asian supermarket. The first one is the made from oyster, the second one is made from mushroom. So you can also use it as an alternative if you do not eat meat. Is everyone okay? Can I continue to the next step? Yeah? All right. So the next step is... Oh, don't forget the pepper. So the next step is we're gonna cut the rest of ingredients. So we're gonna cut our mushroom. We slice thinly and we're gonna mince our garlic and clean the ginger and cut the ginger into to match stick. And we're gonna clean the bean sprout and we're gonna uh, cut the bok choy and spring onion. So we will do this, all of this, uh, while we are waiting for the chicken. And uh, well, while we're waiting for the chicken to be perfectly marinated in 30 minutes. So the first one is we're gonna cut, we're gonna cut the garlic. But before that, this is how we used to. Uh, clean the ginger. You can clean. You can clean the ginger with spoon, so it will help you to reduce uh, the amount of. Uh, so you can save save a lot of uh, the ginger by by scraping it with the spoon. So it's easy. It's easy, and you, yeah, this is the way I usually clean up my 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 ginger. If you do not have the ginger, fresh ginger, you can use ginger paste, like probably around one to two teaspoons, I think. But the, but the reason I use fresh ginger is when you stir fry it with the garlic, it will give a beautiful aroma. So yeah, this is the clean ginger. And After that, we're gonna we're gonna cut the ginger to match stick. Actually, you can grate the ginger as well. If you use the the cheese grater, you can grate the ginger as well. Okay, the next step is the garlic. 
you can mince the garlic, but I'm too, I was too lazy, but I was too lazy when I make, when I cook it. So I use my mini food processor to, to mince the garlic. <laughs> it's really handy. It's really handy tools to have. If you use a lot of garlic when you cook, this is very handy. So, yeah, this is the time when we mince the garlic. And yeah, that's it. That's finished. Four, four garlic in, in, in like 30 seconds and it's done. <laughs> and the next step is we're going to cut our bok choy. So I, I like to separate the white part and the green part because the white, uh, we're going to boil the white part first because it's harder than the green and then the green then the green leaves so yeah i usually put the green leaves first on the on the on the bottom and then yeah the white part on the top I use around one bunch, uh, one one bunch of bok choy. So you can use more if you like. So it's like another uh, additional topping, uh, aside of the chick, uh, the chicken and the mushroom. Okay. Yeah, you can use other vegetable as well, I think. But uh, in Indonesia, we usually use uh, bok choy or or bean sprout and bean sprout because that's the most easier and it's cheap in Indonesia. So actually, but you can use other 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 vegetables, broccoli, or um, what else? or young corn, yeah, you can use that as well. And, and the mushroom, we're gonna, uh, now we're gonna cut the mushroom. I use this in this, when I cooked it, I use white button mushroom and, and I use shiitake, but actually you can use a lot of different mushroom. So this is the shiitake. You can use dried or or fresh shiitake. Uh, the dried one usually you can find it in Asian groceries. Don't worry if the mushroom looks like uh, so many mushroom because it will shrink when we cook it. So yeah, feel free to add more mushroom if you like, or if you do not eat, eat meat, like I said before, you can use different type and different kind of uh, mushroom to replace the chicken.
Okay. Is everyone ready? Because after this, we're gonna stir fry our chicken and mushroom. So while waiting, you can you can take out your pan and yeah, you can preheat your pan. And if you have the lid, if your pan have lid, uh, you can take it out as well because later on when it's simmer, uh, when we, while we're waiting for it, uh, we're gonna close the pan. But if you do not have the lid, that's okay. Okay. So I'm gonna take, oh, sorry. So, we're gonna use one tablespoon of vegetable oil for stir frying. And then we're gonna add the ginger and garlic first. And then we're gonna stir fry it until uh, it smells good. And after that we, get, we will add the chicken and the mushroom and also the sauce. I advise you to prepare the sauce beforehand in a separate bowl, but yeah, uh, yeah, we're gonna use half tablespoon of soy sauce, two tablespoon of sweet soy sauce, one teaspoon of oyster sauce, and 200 ml of chicken stock or water. Yeah, I can get back to the sauce later on while we're waiting for the chicken. Okay, so everyone already preheat your pan? Yeah, okay. Uh, put the vegetable oil and yeah, medium heat. We put one tablespoon of vegetable oil for stir frying. We wait until it's hot, but not too hot. Don't, uh, if, you, if your pan is too hot, take, uh, take it out all you will burn the ginger easily. Test it with a bit of garlic. If it sizzles right away, it means your, your pan is ready. So yeah, it's time to stir fry the ginger and the garlic. Oh, this is the part that where I think it's, I love it so much because the smells is really, really good. <laughs> And in Chinese food, actually, if you add spring onion, you will, uh, in, in, in Chinese food, uh, spring onion, garlic, and ginger are like holy trinity. Like they are, they are really, really good when it mixed together. So, but this time I, I discard the spring onion, only the ginger and the garlic.
okay. Yeah, and now we add our chicken. It should be marinated enough. I use 24 centimeter of pan. I think it's an ideal size. If, if it's smaller than 24, uh, it will be hard when uh, to mix the ingredients later on. I think we're gonna brown it for around two or three minutes for each side. While we are waiting, uh, you can prepare the sauce uh, also. If you would like, you you can prepare the sauce beforehand while waiting for the chicken. We will need half tablespoon of soy sauce, uh, one or two tablespoon of sweet soy sauce, one teaspoon of oyster sauce, and gonna use around two hundred ml of chicken stock or water. As you can see, the chicken will shrink and it will have oil. It will produce the oil. So the sauce will be, need, uh, you will need half tablespoon of soy sauce one or two tablespoon of sweet soy sauce, one teaspoon of oyster sauce, and around 200 ml of chicken stock or water. After this, we're gonna add our mushroom. So uh, prepare your mushroom.
yeah. So we're gonna season our chicken now with soy sauce, oyster sauce. As you can see, the chicken is shrink, shrinking. Yeah, I put too much sweet soy sauce when I cook this. So I think two tablespoons if it is enough. <laughs> and at the mushroom. It looks full, but it will shrink in a moment. <laughs> Don't forget to add the chicken stock or the water a bit by bit. Make sure you make sure the, the mushroom and the chicken are properly coated with the sauce. Okay, now we close the pan with the lid and uh, let it simmer for around 15 minutes. And don't forget to reduce your heat just a bit. And yeah, we, we just gonna wait. If you do not have the lid, that's all right. Just, just make sure you uh, reduce your heat. That's great, Elise. I'm I'm gonna speak to us now, just for mm -hmm. a few minutes while um, yeah, while the chicken is simmering. Don't forget to turn the heat down and keep an eye on the pan. Um, while I'm speaking, we wouldn't want anyone to um to have an accident. Um. Food, food is essential, isn't it? We know this. Um, we this is why people were panic buying earlier in lockdown. There are certain things that you don't ever want to run out of: toilet paper, um, those little bottles of hand sanitizer, and food. We're going to have a look at a brief incident in the life of Jesus where there had been a shortage of food. A huge crowd of thousands of people had followed Jesus because they'd heard about the signs and miracles he was performing, and they had no food. So Jesus provided them all with a meal um, for just a few loaves of bread and a few small fish. Everybody in the crowd ate and was satisfied, and they gathered up baskets and baskets full of leftovers. You'd be surprised, wouldn't you, if after eating your fill of Indonesian noodles this evening, there were more leftover at the end than there were to begin with. 
And this is this is the miracle or the sign uh, that's recorded in all four Gospels, known as the feeding of the 5,000. And because of this amazing miracle, or possibly just because of the free lunch, huge crowds have again followed Jesus. And he takes the opportunity to explain the meaning of the sign. So I'd just like to spend a few minutes unpacking what Jesus says. This is from John's Gospel, chapter 6 and verse 48. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the bread of life, Jesus says, but what does he actually mean? Well, there's a story behind this. Thousands of years earlier, the people of Israel had been rescued by God out of Egypt where they were slaves. If you've ever watched the Disney film, Prince of Egypt, you'll know this. God rescued Israel, led them out of Egypt to freedom. But what you might not know is that soon afterwards, they had a shortage of food. And so God provided manna, bread from heaven, to feed them as they journeyed through the wilderness. And the Jews in Jesus's day would have grown up with this story, the story of the Exodus, it's the story of how their nation was born, how they became a people, how they came to have this special relationship with God. They knew God as the Lord, a rescuer and a provider to their ancestors. That's the story in the background. And so Jesus stands before them now, thousands of years later, at around the time of year when they remember that Exodus story. And Jesus reenacts it. He provides them with bread in the wilderness, just like God did all those years earlier. And then he makes this point. Your ancestors ate the manna in the story of the Exodus, and it sustained them through the wilderness for 40 years. But eventually your ancestors all died. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. That bread had its limits. But he says, I am the bread of life. Just like God sent manna to your ancestors, now he is sending me. But if you eat of me, unlike your ancestors, you won't die. You'll never die. Verse 50, this is the bread that came down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. Jesus is the bread of life, new and improved bread from heaven, bread from heaven 2.0, bread that won't just keep you marching through the wilderness, but bread that will give you eternal life. Jesus is the bread of life, come down from heaven. That language of coming down from heaven also has that Exodus story in mind. After the people had come out of Egypt, God came down to meet them on a mountain. And the mountain shook and there was fire and smoke and it was terrifying. See, if God were to come down, I wonder what you would expect if God were to step into the world to announce himself to rescue. How would he do it? Maybe in the form of a mighty warrior, Thor style, hammer in hand, perhaps in the form of a wise teacher or a great political leader, an activist or a revolutionary. Well, in fact, shockingly, scandalously, he came to give his life. Jesus is the bread of life who gave his life for the world. Verse 51 says this. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. That word flesh, Jesus is talking about his death. Not a tragic accident, it turns out, but a deliberate act on his part. He gave his flesh for, on behalf of, 
the life of the world. When the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt to rescue them, after warning after warning, God sent terrible judgments on their oppressors. And the final judgment was the death of the firstborn, a terrible judgment. Because Egypt refused to let Israel go, the firstborn in every household would die. But God provided a way out, a shelter from the judgment. If you took a lamb and painted the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of your home, then when the Lord came through the land that night, he would pass over that house. See, the lamb died on behalf of the firstborn. And the lamb was eaten, its flesh was eaten. In every household, there was a death. But for those who trusted the Lord, the lamb died instead. And that night, God set his people free from their oppressors. But the Bible says that there is a judgment coming, not just on Egypt, but on the whole world. A final day of justice when all wrongs are righted and justice will prevail and we will stand before God, each one of us, and give an account. The Bible says that all of us are, by our very nature, rebels. We shake our fists at God. We turn away from him. We resent his right to rule over us, although he is good and loving. And this is what sin is. Sin is not just a few naughty things done from time to time, but it's the direction of our whole lives lived in rebellion against God, ruling over ourselves and our world apart from him. And we can look around at our own lives and at the world and see what a dreadful mistake this is. Our lives are disordered, our relationships are ruined, our world is divided and we die. This pandemic has brought that reality home to us. Our world is dying and we die. Sin leads to death. And after death comes the judgment of God and rightly so. But the Lord came down to rescue Jesus, the bread of life, came to give his life on behalf of the world. When Jesus died, he wasn't just dying, if I can put it that way. He was experiencing the judgment that we, as sinners, deserve. He experienced that instead of you. So by giving his flesh, Jesus offers complete forgiveness, everlasting life to anyone who would trust him, anyone who would come and eat the bread of life, whoever you are and whatever you've done. When we say Jesus is the bread of life, this is what we mean. The Lord God came from heaven to die for you, to rescue you. How do you respond to this? Maybe you'd prefer it if he had come like Hercules or Thor because that would mean we simply needed a hero. But when the problem is sin and death and judgment, a mighty hero can't save. Maybe you'd prefer it if he'd come as a teacher, but when the problem is sin and death and judgment, a wise teacher can't save. Maybe you'd prefer it if he'd become as a political revolutionary. And whilst there are better and worse governments, when the problem is sin and death and judgment, only the sacrificial death of Jesus can save. We need to come to Jesus, the bread of life. He is exactly the rescuer we need. Just briefly before we get back to cooking, what does Jesus save people for? God saved Israel from Egypt for life in the promised land. Through Jesus, God saves people from sin and death and judgment for eternal life. And eternal life is not just floating around in the clouds playing the harp. Just listen to this from the book of Isaiah in the Bible, describing what eternal life is like for those who've trusted Jesus, those who've eaten the bread of life. Isaiah says this, 
the Lord of hosts will make for peop all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food, full of marrow, of aged wine, well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people he will take away from the earth. A feast, a feast of rich food, even better than the one we're looking forward to this evening. It's time to get back to cooking, to check on the chicken. Thank you very much for listening. And if you'd like to find out more about Jesus, if you have questions about him or about anything that's been said this evening, uh, feel free to pop them in the chat or get in touch through our website. We've got lots of ways of helping you find out more about Jesus as well that I, I'll flag up at the end. For now, uh, back to Elise. Right. So, yeah, at this at this point, we need to check the chicken. <laughs> uh, the next step will be almost done. So we're gonna boil water in the pot to uh, to boil our noodles and the vegetables. We're gonna check the chicken and yeah. Uh, yeah, I let's boil uh, around six hundred mils of water. You can use more uh, because when you boil the noodles, if you use too little of water, your noodle will be very soggy and therefore we, you will not get a right texture. So boil, boil around 600 ml of water. And yeah, it seems that your chicken is almost ready. Take out your noodles and prepare the bowls. And, and also prepare your vegetables as well. So here they are, the chicken is ready. Nearly. As you can see, the, the, the chicken is shrinking. We prepare the bowl, uh, the noodles, the bok choy, and the bean sprout. So this is the last part. Uh, we're gonna season our noodles. Uh, so if you have tongs, it's it it's it's better if uh, it will be very helpful if you have tongs. Uh, you can. Uh, take the vegetable easier and you can mix the sauce with the noodles easier as well. So what we're going to do is when your water is boiling, we add the bok choy and then around for one minute and then we take it out and set aside. And then after that, we add bean sprout around 30 seconds and then take it out and set aside. And the, next, the last one is going to seasoning the noodles. I'm gonna boil the noodles and then we're gonna take
take it out and season with the with the sauce from the chicken mushroom. So here they are. I'm boiling the water. The water is boiled, and I add the the white part of bok choy. And then the green part. Yeah. At this point, the chicken has been as is ready. You can taste it and adjust the taste if you want. You can add the sesame oil as well if you like. So we boil the bok choy. And after that, we will take it out and set aside. at the bean sprout. The bean sprout, no need to boil it for long. It's, I think around 30 seconds or so. So you can get crunchy texture when you eat the, the vegetable later on. Set aside the bean sprout. How long did you boil that bok choy for? I think I was around one minute or so. It's just because in Indonesia, we, we are not tend to eat a, a raw vegetable. <laughs> especially the leafy one. Yeah. And the next one is we are gonna boil the noodles. Take at, while waiting for the noodles, you can take one tablespoon of the sauce of the chicken mushroom to the bowls. It's gonna be used to season your noodles later on. One around one, one or one and a half tablespoon of the sauce, and you can add a pinch of paper and one teaspoon of sesame oil. When you boil the noodles, uh, you can follow the instructions of the packaging. I usually take it the noodles, take the noodles out 30 seconds earlier because while, you, while after you take it out, actually the, the noodles is still in the cooking, it's still cooked with the heat. So my preference is I dislike uh, soggy or too soft noodles. So I like it a bit hard. So that's why I usually take it out around 30 seconds earlier than, than, the, pack, than the instruction. Also, this is to make your noodles texture better. So you take it, you pull it out to the air and then you pull it, pulling back. I learned this from YouTube in Korea. <laughs> so 
So you take it, the noodles out, and then you seasoning, you mix it with the tom, and make sure that the sauce is covered, the noodles. And after that, add the topping, the vegetable, the mushroom. And you can add the topping. Is everyone finished? Is there any part that you would like to for me to repeat the video? Because it's finished. <laughs> Ta -da! The last one, spring onion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it looks very easy, right? Yeah, it should be. <laughs> You can try and let me know, is it easy or not? <laughs> How often do you cook? This one, like once a month, I think. Once a month. Yeah, I, we like to eat noodles and this is the, the easiest one that I can cook. Mm. And because I can reuse the topping in different ways, like add with the rice and then add with some chicken stock and then i steam it it will become steamed chicken noodle eh. yeah steamed chicken mushroom rice <laughs> so yeah enjoy wow. thank you so thank much you. elise really is sylvia's great. done is well, yeah, alex I, I went done in to uh, to lend her a hand we're, we're nearly done how are you getting on claire still going Alex has switched the camera off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Still want to get um, dirty fingers on the devices. How's that? Let's have a look, Carl. See how um, Alex is getting on. Uh, stuff's happening. Finish or have any problem that I can help with? <laughs> Just a little, few little mishaps, but we're okay. We're okay. Okay. You take a pic take a picture so we can all see. Uh, I'm on Alex's phone, so it's a bit hard. Um, oh, okay. We're, took some we're pictures working on it. <laughs> Let us see. <laughs> oh, there we go. Maybe I can spot like that. There we go. Bit watery, but. Recognizable from the picture. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit watery, the, the noodles. The the um the the chicken is a bit watery for us. Uh, well it looks it looks uh, not, not okay. Okay. Great, just before I finish the recording, I'll just show you all um you 
can see some other events that we've been doing. So many of you will have seen this already. This is the surviving lockdown page of the website, trinitybristol.church. And if you scroll down, you can see the events that we've run previous weeks, a little seminar on anxiety here, uh, and then one on money that you can watch those on YouTube. And I will pop this one up soon under the food thing so that you can try the recipe again at your leisure. Um, and right up at the top is the contact us page. If, if you have any follow up or questions about this evening, or you'd like to find out more about Jesus or more about our church, um, you can you can fill in the form here on our website. So it's trinitybristol.church.